So what I want to teach you about now is parent-child relationships. So right now in my scene, I have a plane and a cube. And we can see them in our hierarchy. And in here, in the hierarchy, they are completely separate objects. And as such, if I move one, nothing really happens to the other. But if I grab, say, the cube and hold and hover on top of the plane, it creates a parent-child relationship. So now you can see the cube is the child of the plane. And you can undo it by grabbing the child and dragging it out. And I can do it the other way around, too. Now, now, now the plane is the child of the cube, and the cube is the parent of the plane. So now if I click the plane, the child object, I move it around, nothing really happens to the cube. But, un undo, undo, if I grab the cube, the parent object, the plane moves around with it. So... The way parent, what parent-child relationships do is they set the transform or the position rotation scale uh, of the child relative to its parent. So right now you can see that the cube is just at some you know random point in space. You know, you know something ugly and difficult to describe, but the plane, its position is still just underneath the cube and centered so its position is relative to the to the uh, parent and the same can be said for rotation actually I'm not my mistake I meant to grab the cube there rotation and scaling So any manipulation you do to the parent will apply to the, all of its children as well, but not vice versa. So let's undo all this. All right, so next I want to show you something cool. Here we have, instead of a 3D object, I want to create an empty. Now this is an empty game object. All it is is a point in space it has no other properties no other physicality or anything other than just being a point that exists that is defined by this position so let's put that in the center and you can see so what we can do here now let's move it away a little bit now Empty game objects have a lot of cool things they can do. If I were to take my cube and make it a child of the empty game object, you can you can uh, f you know physically connect them, and then you can rotate your empty game object, and you've got a pivot point for objects. You can also use this to uh, or you can use it for to uh, organize your hierarchy as well. So say we've got this plane, and let's we'll scale it up. So this plane is our ground, is the floor of our world of our game, and we we have we have a, a bunch of cubes. You know they're just we're in some cityscape or some playpen some block world in which there are just so many cubes our hierarchy is now full of cubes this is just really unmanageable and difficult to work with but you can select all of them and just put them underneath as children of the game of empty game object and you can collapse it and just organize everything together. So sometimes you don't necessarily need a pivot point. Sometimes all you just need is to organize everything, and that's something you have the power to do. And then you can rename this game object either by slow double-clicking or by coming over to the Inspector tab. And we'll just call this Cubes.
Now I want so now I want to get rid of most of these cubes because I showed you what I wanted to show you. Now I want to show now I want to show you a couple of the things up here. So we have the option to toggle where it looks like an object object's position is. So the pivot point is where the center of an object is. That is where where that transform is defined by. So for most shapes, like a cube, is defined by the very center of the shape. For the uh, empty point in space, it's defined by the exact spot of that empty point in space. That that's its pivot point. Now, with objects such as uh, such as this. We can we can click on it. It will show us where its pivot point is, and allows us to do things like this. Or we can click on this pivot point and send, instead define that where the, that transform by the center of the object, and that's more of the cent oops the center of mass. So for the cube, that center is still in the center of that cube, but if I click on the empty game object, it's still showing it in the center of the cube. That's because that empty game object has no physical bearing outside of that cube. That cube is its center of mass. So if I were to copy and paste this cube and move it over here, so now that center of mass is going to be between those two cubes. Now I'm sh I'm telling you this because I've I remember when I accidentally accidentally clicked that without realizing it and could not figure out why everything was broken. I did, nothing was working right. So I'm trying to help you avoid my mistake. Now the next thing I want to show you is local versus global. So let's get rid of this other cube. Now if I take this cube and I want to I rotate it a little bit. Now there are local coordinates and there are global coordinates. So in local, the uh, according to this cube, the forward direction is that way, and its you know horizontal direction is that way. But in global space. The, for, the forward direction is that way, and the horizontal direction is that way. So think of it as, you know, this is north, north and south, east and west on a compass in your world. And you can think of uh, local space as, you know, this is your nose. This is where your nose is facing. And this is, you know... You si this is you sidestepping, so you have a difference between you know your global space of the world and where rel space relative to an object. So just be aware of that as well.